Chapter 11, Defeat The next morning, even before I crawled out from the hollow log where I slept, I could hear the rain pattering on the roof of my home. Would it never stop? I made a face to myself in the darkness. What a dull day this was going to be. I decided to just go back to sleep. I refused to go out and face the day. At least I was warm and dry in the hollow log, even if I was bored. Pogo! Pogo, are you still in there? Pogo, aren't you coming for breakfast? We've been waiting for you, and we're starved. You feeling okay? I'm fine. Just getting some extra sleep, that's all. Can't a guy even catch up a bit? Breakfast isn't going to run away, you know. The sky is clearing in the west. It could be great for sliding this morning. I looked to the west. There was a patch of blue beginning to show. Maybe Woody was right. Maybe the day wouldn't be such a waste after all. We moved forward like we were all part of the same machine and started up the hill with grins on our faces. The grins didn't stay there for long. The first step told us that things hadn't improved that much. The slope was still gooey and wet. I kept right on plowing through the mud, even though I sensed that the other fellows had stopped with the first two or three steps. I was determined to get to the top so that I could have at least one slide down. It was no use. I got so bogged down in the mud, I feared I would never get myself free from it. I was trying to turn myself around, but I was getting nowhere. With dismay, I realized I was stuck fast in the mud. How could I ever admit to the fellas that their leader had gone and gotten himself stuck in the mud of the bank? How humiliating! I was pondering what to do when I heard Flip holler. I looked up to see what he was yelling about. Down the stream... Arms spreading out and dragging both banks came a big poplar tree. It must have been down by the storm, and now the swollen waters of the rain-flooded creek were carrying it along with the current. All of us were right in its path. Doc, quick! I heard all four turtles hit the water as one. I knew that they wouldn't stop swimming until they reached the bottom, where they would be safe from the massive tree. But I couldn't duck. I was firmly stuck in the mud of the creek bank. I had enough presence of mind to tuck in my head. My feet wouldn't tuck. A branch of the tree caught me on my left side and lifted me up out of the mud like I had been walking on dry ground. I guess a little thing like mud doesn't stop flood power. I could feel myself swept through the air at a speed that I had never gone before. If I hadn't been so scared, it might have been fun. Swish, I went. Swish, right down the side of the creek. Leaves were rustling in my ears, the creek was gurgling and gulping, the trunk of the tree thumped and jolted as it banged against rocks and other trees. It was all deafening. I knew there was no use yelling. No one would hear me. And even if they did, there was nothing that anyone could do for me. I held my breath. My side was hurting. One leg was hurting. I felt that I had been banged and hammered for mile after mile. And then it all stopped almost as suddenly as it had started. With a sickening grind and moan, the tree wedged itself at the bend in the creek and flopped around like a dying thing for a few moments, tossing and whipping me back and forth. Then it lay still, shivering as though it was suffering. Nothing happened. Nothing moved. I waited for a few seconds more. Still nothing seemed to stir. At last, very slowly... I began to put out my head, bit by little bit. Nothing happened. Then I began to open my eyes, oh, so slowly. The sun was shining. I opened my eyes all the way. Leaves were all around me. Branches seemed to hem me in. Moving my head just enough to look around me, I tried to spot a clear path out of the web of tree branches. Off to my right, everything seemed to be blocked. I checked the left. To my relief, I spotted a little passageway. Certainly it looked big enough for one small turtle to make his way through. I seemed to ache all over. Were all my parts still workable? Would my legs still move? I extended my right front leg carefully, slowly. It hurt a bit, but it did respond. Then I tried my left front leg. It didn't even hurt. It was fine. I tried my right hind leg. That one really hurt. I grimaced. I was sure something must be broken. I tried again. It hurt, but it moved. Then I tried my left hind leg. It too moved, though there was some pain involved. Okay, 
You're still in working order. Let's get out of here. It was slow work turning myself around in the tangle of leaves and branches, but at last I managed to do so. Then I began to weave my way out of the passageway that I had spotted. It seemed to take forever, and I was tired and sore by the time I was finally clear of the entangling tree. Yet I knew that if it hadn't been for that tree, I would still be stuck back in the mud on the creek bank. Just before I lowered myself into the creek water, I turned to it. Thanks, though you really didn't need to be so rough about it. Still, I'm grateful that you got me out, and with the fellas not knowing I was stuck and all, you won't ever squeal on me, will you? For an answer, the tree just waved its branches in the wind. Even swimming hurt, though the water felt good on my aching bones. I started back up the stream. As far as I was concerned, I had had enough excitement for one day.